There are two main tricks that make Americans speak so fast, linking and reductions. Let's study a scene from the TV series Friends to look at these two important characteristics of spoken American English. You'll improve your listening skills and sound more natural speaking English when you link and reduce this way. This is the scene that we'll study. It's about 35 seconds long. The New Year's Eve party has just ended and they're all talking about their New Year's resolutions. Are you making any this year? If so, let me know in the comments below. Blair forgot her glasses and she's gonna really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend who, from what I hear, needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Rach, maybe your resolution should be to um, gossip less. I don't gossip. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe sometimes I find out things or I hear something and I pass that information on, you know, kind of like a public service. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. I mean, would you call Ted Koppel a gossip? Well, if Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers botched boob jobs, yeah, I would. <laughs> How do they do that? I mean, at the beginning of this clip, Rachel is speaking so fast how do people still understand her? It has to do with pulling out the stressed words. Let's take a look at the analysis. Blair forgot her glasses. The first thing I like to do is to study what are our most stressed syllables that gives us our anchor for the sentence. So listen to this sentence three times and see if you can figure out what you think are the most stressed syllables. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. I hear two stress syllables, the name. Blair forgot her glasses. And then also the first syllable of glasses. So when we have a stressed word that has more than one syllable, it's just the stressed syllable that feels stressed. The unstressed syllables, even in a stressed word, are not stressed. So Blair forgot her, forgot and her, a little bit less clear, said more quickly to give us that contrast with our stress syllables that are a little bit longer and have that up down shape of stress. Now, one of the things that happens in unstressed words is sometimes we have reductions and that means the sound changes or is dropped. Here we do have that. The word her, how is that pronounced? Let's listen again. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Forgot her. Forgot her. Forgot her. Er, er, er. The H is dropped, isn't it? That's a pretty common way to pronounce her. Also, he, his, him. Those can all be pronounced without the H. Forgot her. Now, this T is not t a true T, is it? The rule for T pronunciations is when it's between two vowel or diphthong sounds, like it is here, it becomes a flap T, which sounds like the D between vowels in American English. So forgot her, forgot her, forgot her, da, 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 forgot her. Those two words linked with a flap. I forgot her, I forgot her, I forgot her. Now don't try to say forgot, for. I know you see F-O-R, but it's actually fur. Fur. That is written with the schwa R in phonetics in IPA. And the schwa gets absorbed by the R. So it's like the vowel drops out. Fur. Forget. Forgot. Forget. Forgot. Very fast first syllable with no vowel. Forgot. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. Blair forgot her glasses. And she's going to really be needing these. So this next thought group, very fast, and she speaks so quickly with her reductions. Now, a native speaker has no problem understanding what she's saying because of the anchors she gives us the stressed syllables. So let's just listen to the first few words. See if you can feel the one stressed syllable here. And she's going to really, and she's going to really, and she's going to really, man, she's going to really. So. Peak of stress, I would say for there, she's. Man, she's gonna really. Then we have four unstressed syllables said so quickly. Going to becomes gonna. And really, we don't have any reductions or changes there, but it's just said 
very quickly. And it's flat. There's not a lot of energy or volume in the voice, not length, no up down shape. Gonna really, gonna really, gonna really, gonna really, gonna really, gonna really. I can do that without moving my lips or my jaw at all. It's all tongue. And by simplifying those mouth movements, that helps me get that out more quickly. Man, she's gonna really, man, she's gonna really, gonna really, gonna really, gonna really, gonna really. See if you can match that speed and simplify like crazy to get there. And she's gonna really, and she's gonna really, and she's gonna really be needing these, be needing these, be needing these. Then we have two more stress syllables, be needing these. They both have the E vowel, needing these. Do you notice needing becomes needing, needing. So the NG ending gets changed to just the I as in sit and needing, needing, be needing these. Uh, do you hear that uh, up down shape? That's the feeling of stress. Be needing these. Uh, be needing these. Be needing these. Be needing these. And those syllables are definitely way more clear than gonna really, gonna really, gonna really be, gonna really be. And she's gonna really, and she's gonna really, and she's gonna really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. So we have a little bit more stress here. To keep an eye. I would say a little bit on eye. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. And then quite a bit on boy. So those are our stress words. Those are the only syllables with length and more clarity. The rest of the syllables really mumbly. And if that was all we did was speak in unstressed syllables, nobody would ever understand anyone. But by having that mixed in with stressed syllables, we understand perfectly. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. Actually, if you go to my video, Rachel's English, native speakers can't understand this. It's really funny. I actually play parts of sentences from friends that would just be unstressed words and my friends and family cannot figure out what is being said. But then when I play the whole sentence, they understand. So that just goes to show how unclear these unstressed words are by themselves. Even a native speaker can't understand them. But in the context of a whole sentence, then we understand them. So you really have to keep that in mind when you're trying to speed up and simplify your unstressed syllables. They are not going to be clear, and that's okay. And she's going to really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend. And she's going to really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend. And she's going to really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend. Needing these to... Now, the word to, I barely hear it. Extremely light, true T, and a schwa, but it's so fast. I almost don't hear that word. Needing these to keep an eye, to keep an eye, to keep an eye, to keep an eye. And everything links together smoothly. The ending P into the schwa, and, 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 and. the ending N into the E eh as in bed vowel. Sorry, the I as in by diphthong. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that keep an eye on that. So fast, a little bit of a peek on eye, but those words said so quickly. To keep an eye on that, to keep an eye on that, to keep an eye on that. And you have to simplify to say those words that quickly. We have a stop T in the word that because the next word begins with a consonant. So it's not that, but that, 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 that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend. To keep an eye on that boyfriend boyfriend, and a really light release of that D. Boyfriend, boyfriend, boyfriend. Who, from what I hear, who, up, down, shape of stress, who, from what I hear, from what, lower in pitch, flatter, from what I hear, and then another peak of stress on I. Who, from what I hear, who, from what I hear, who, from what I hear, from what, from. So we don't have a full uh 
as a butter vowel there, I would say it's a schwa. From, 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 from what I hear, what I. Do you hear how that T is a flap T? Because it's linking two vowel or diphthong sounds together, the uh as in butter and the I diphthong. That helps us move through that word and that sound more quickly rather than a stop and a release. It's just a flap. What I, what I, what I, what I. From what I hear, we really like our words linked together in American English. From what I hear, from what I hear, from what I hear, what I hear. And I would say we have a little bit of a curve back up here. Here. So that's signaling she's going to say more. This change of direction of pitch shows us stress. So stress is usually up and then down, but sometimes it's down and then up. The word here, written in IPA, H consonant, I vowel, schwa R. But a couple of things. The R absorbs the schwa, so it's just a single R sound. And this R sound changes the I vowel. It's not I, hit, I, hair, 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 but it's here, ear. It's a lot more like the E vowel. So the R changes I into E. Here. I heard, I heard, I hear needs to keep his stapler. Needs to keep his stapler. Okay, so she is giving some good juicy gossip here. So she's slowing down a little bit, needs to keep his, doesn't drop the H in his, doesn't even reduce the vowel in two, which is a little bit unusual. That's a true T and the U vowel. So she's being extra clear here because of how good this gossip is. Needs to keep his stapler, really stressing that. Stapler, a lot of pitch change going pretty high there. Needs to keep his stapler, needs to keep his stapler, needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer. In his desk drawer. Drawer. Up, down, shape of stress, and then going up a little bit at the end to show a little bit more she wants to say about it. And again, really clear, doesn't drop the H in his. Everything a little bit longer, a little bit more clear because she thinks, wow, this is so important, so juicy. I'm so excited to share this gossip. In his desk drawer, in his desk drawer, in his desk drawer, if you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. Okay. And then she gets a little bit more playful. If you know what I'm talking. And we have one big peak of stress on talking. So talking becomes talking. She changes the NG sound to just an IN sound. I as in sit. N, unstressed syllable. Talking. Talking. Now the L in talking dropped. Not dropped, but not pronounced. It's silent. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm. Said a little bit more quickly than that. If you know becomes if you know. If you know. Not you, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If you know what I'm. If you know what I'm. If you know what I'm. What a da 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 I'm. Again, we're linking those words with a flap T. That's what we do when a word ends in a vowel or diphthong plus T. And the next word is a vowel or diphthong. Link that smoothly with a single flap, really feeding into that characteristic of smoothness for American English. If you know what I'm talking about. 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 About, about, about. Stop T, not released. That's usually what we do with T's at the end of a thought group. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. If you know what I'm talking about. So on the first slide, she was speaking so fast. Here, she's slowed down a little bit, but we still have contrast. We still have the clear up-down shape on some syllables, but definitely not all of them. The other syllables are just flatter. They don't have uh or uh changes in pitch the same way that those stressed syllables do. Needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer 
keep his stapler in his desk drawer, okay? This is a sexual innuendo, which means we use a phrase that has a normal, plain, innocent meaning in English, but we use it to mean something sexual. So, of course, stapler here being penis and desk drawer being pants. In other words, she's heard Blair's boyfriend is sleeping around. Needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer. Needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer. Needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey said quickly, going up towards that peak of stress on Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach. Hey, Rach, maybe your resolution should be to, um... Maybe your resolution should be to, um... So we have a couple stress syllables there. Your, because they're all making resolutions there. Maybe your resolution should be to... Maybe your resolution should be to, um... Maybe your resolution should be to, um... Maybe your resolution should be to, um... Actually, she doesn't reduce to. She actually says to instead of to. Maybe your resolution should be to... Um, she's thinking about how to say this. It's a little bit of a touchy subject. Nobody wants to be a gossip. And here, she's basically telling Rachel that Rachel is a gossip. Maybe your resolution should be to... Um, maybe your resolution should be to... Um, maybe your resolution should be to... Um, Maybe your resolution. Do you notice that those words are linked together with a single R sound? There's no reiteration of the R or any lift or break. This is what we do to help link in American English. If one word ends in a sound, the next word begins in it. We link with that single consonant sound. Maybe your resolution should be smooth linking, no breaks, Resolution should, those are all lower in pitch and flatter, but they're not rushed quite as much as the way Rachel was rushing her speech at the beginning of this scene. Maybe your resolution should be to, um, maybe your resolution should be to, um, maybe your resolution should be to, um, should be to, um, should be, should, the L in should is silent. And the D is not released if the next word begins with a consonant. So it's not should be should be, but it's should be, should be. Do you hear how I hold that D in my vocal cords? I'm exaggerating it there, but I don't release it. I just go right into the B sound then. So that D will be very quick, very subtle before going on to the B consonant. Should be to, um, should be to, um, should be to, um, gossip less. <laughs> gossip less gossip less. Do you hear how we have that peak of stress on our first syllable there? Gossip less. And then the other two syllables just come in as the pitch falls away, but it's smooth. We don't have a jump or a skip. Ah, ah, gossip less. All smoothly connected. Gossip less. Gossip less. Gossip less. What? What? She cuts off the word what. She can't believe she's being accused of this. What? 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 I don't gossip. I don't gossip. So, pretty high intonation. I don't gossip. So, don't and ga are both stressed. The one is an up, down, shape, and the next, down, up. She can't believe it. I don't gossip. And makes her intonation go up. I don't gossip. I don't gossip. I don't gossip. The N apostrophe T contraction here pronounced as a quick stop. I don't gossip. Don't ga. Don't. 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 So the N apostrophe T contraction has a couple different pronunciations. Usually when it's followed by a consonant, that's what we do. We do a quick lift break, little tiny separation, and that stop signifies the T. I don't gossip. I don't gossip. I don't gossip. Gossip? 
and she releases that P sound. She kind of holds on to her G a little bit more too. She's really stressing that word. She can't believe she's being accused of this. Gossip, gossip, gossip. <laughs> and everyone reacts with sort of a chuckle. <laughs> 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 And again, what, what, without really a T, what, what, what? You could think of that as a stop, maybe signifying a stop T. What, 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 what? what? Maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes. So we have two stressed syllables there. Maybe sometimes. And then she makes her intonation go up a little bit because she's going up towards another peak of stress. Maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes, maybe sometimes I find out things. I find out things. I find out things. So find and things also stressed, but things has a down up intonation because she's going to keep going. She's going to keep defending herself. I find out things. I find out things. I find out things. Out things, out, stop T there, because the next word begins with a consonant. Now, nothing here is reduced. It's all more clear. We do have unstressed syllables, but they're just a little bit longer and clearer than when she was gossiping at the beginning. I find out things. I find out things. I find out things, or I hear something. Or I hear something. Or I, really being clear here, I think each of those has a little bit of a stress syllable feeling. Or I hear something. Definitely more on the word hear. And don't forget, that vowel is going to sound more like E because it's followed by R. Hear. Or I hear. Or I hear. Or I hear something and I pass that information on. Hear something, and she goes right back up for another little peak of stress on some. Hear something, and I pass that information on. 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 Pass some up down shape on that vowel, and I pass that information. A little bit on our stressed syllable information in. Pass that information on. On. Change in direction definitely has some stress longer. But again, she made her intonation go up at the end. Just like she did here. She's not done talking. She's not giving it a statement, I'm done intonation. Because she's going to continue to defend herself. Pass that information on. Pass that information on. Pass that information on. Here's something and I pass. So we have three unstressed syllables here that are definitely said more quickly. Something and I pass. Da 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 da. Here's something and I pass. Here's something and I pass. Here's something and I pass. And the word and is reduced. We dropped that D. We just almost never say that D. So she doesn't reduce the vowel. It's still a, a, a vowel after n changes. I'm sorry, a vowel before n changes. It's not an, an, but a, a, sort of like a relaxed a with an a, uh, a, a, an, an, and I pass that information on. And I pass that information on. And I pass that information on and I pass that information on. Information. You see F-O-R. Don't say for. Say infer. Schwa R. Just an R sound there. Information. And the T-I-O-N ending in this word is the S-H schwa N syllable. Shin, shin. Information on. Information on. Information on. Information on information on. Actually, she does a little bit of a 
breaking away of on from the end, she doesn't say information on, information on. She breaks it away a little bit from that end. When we separate something and we don't really make it link in, that gives it a little bit more stress. Information on, information on, information on, you know, you know, you know, you know, a little quick phrase, one feeling, you know, going up in intonation. No is our stressed word. The word you reduces. It's not you. It's yeah. Yeah. Said so quickly. Yeah. 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 You know, you know, linked onto that word. You know, you know, you know, kind of like a public service. Kind of like a public service. A little bit of stress on kind. Kind of like a public service and then stress on sir. And again, it's the up down kind. She wants to keep going. She wants to keep convincing them. Kind of like a public service. Kind of like a public service. Kind of like a public service. The word of schwa v said very quickly. It's pretty common to drop that V, kind of like, kind of like, but I do hear her making it quickly, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like, kind of like a, kind of like a. So of, like, a, uh, just said quickly, linked together before our stressed syllable, puh. Kind of like a, kind of like a, kind of like a public service. Public service, da-da-da-da. Da, da. Do you hear that? Two stressed words in a row. Each has first syllable stressed. So we, sorry, let me say the end. Each has first syllable stress. So we have a stressed syllable and an unstressed syllable. A stressed syllable and an unstressed syllable. And those should feel different. Stress should feel different than unstressed. Public service. Public service. Public service. Public service public service <laughs> doesn't mean I'm a gossip doesn't mean I'm a gossip so we have good stress here doesn't mean doesn't mean I'm a gossip and then she goes up at the end but both of those have the up down shape of stress again she really stresses gossip by kind of holding on to that g a little bit doesn't mean I'm a gossip we have an n apostrophe t contraction here let's look at how it's pronounced doesn't mean I'm a gossip. Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. Doesn't mean. Doesn't mean. I would say that T is totally dropped. Doesn't mean. Now, notice that the S in doesn't is pronounced as a Z. Does, 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 does. Doesn't mean I'm a. Doesn't mean I'm a. Mean I'm a flatter. We don't have that up, down, or down, up intonation change. It, they're also said more quickly, but they're all linked together really smoothly, aren't they? Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. I mean, would you call Ted Koppel a gossip? I mean, would you call Ted Koppel a gossip? So this is a yes, no question. And that's why the intonation goes up at the end. Gossip. So ga, our first syllable there, definitely stressed. Would you call, our verb has stress, call Ted Koppel a gossip. Everything else said pretty quickly. The words I mean, very unclear. I mean, would you call... I mean, would you call? I mean, would you call? I mean, would you? 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 Not clear at all, right? Okay, so the word would, L is always silent. When we have a word that ends in a D, followed by you or your, it's fairly common, maybe like half the time, to not hear a D, but instead for the D to combine with the Y and to get a J sound, would you? Would j -j 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 -j. Would you? That's written in IPA with these two symbols together. J, j, j. Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? Would you? I mean, would you? I mean, would you? I mean, would you? You have to say those words that quickly to get the contrast. Call. I mean, would you? Call. Those words have a really different feel. And in order to say those words that quickly, 
You have to really simplify. You have to make them short, of course, and you're going to do that by keeping your intonation more flat. Simplify mouth movements. Amuju. Amuju. You can't look at the black and white of the words and think, I need to say these four words because you would never say them that quickly. So just imitate what you hear right now. Amuju. 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 And try that. Play with that. Simplifying. Amuju. 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 I mean, would you call Ted Koppel a gossip? Would you call Ted Koppel? So the word call has a dark L. Don't lift your tongue tip for that. Call. Oh, oh, oh. I'm making that with the back part of my tongue pressing down a little bit. Call. Oh, 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 oh. But the tip stays down. The back presses down and back just a little bit. That's how we get that sound. Call Ted Koppel. So a proper noun no matter how many names we have for someone, we might be calling someone by their first, their middle, their last. Stress is always on the last name. So in this case, Koppel, it's a two-syllable word with first-syllable stress. So Ted is less stressed than Koppel. Would you call Ted Koppel? Would you call Ted Koppel? Would you call Ted Koppel? Ted Koppel. Ted Koppel. Again, dark L here. Make a dark sound. Copple. Oh, oh, oh. Coppola. Coppola. Now, when a dark L is followed by a vowel, like here, it's followed by the schwa. I do sometimes lift my tongue tip to give a little bit of a feeling of clarity that I'm going into another syllable here. Ted Coppola. But make that dark sound first. Really quick dark sound before you just very lightly, quickly lift your tongue tip to link into the schwa. Coppola. Coppola. Ted Coppola gossip? Ted Coppola gossip? Ted Coppola gossip? Ted Coppola gossip? Now we've seen and heard the word gossip over and over, but I just want to point out in case you're not hearing it, you see the letter O, it is the ah vowel like in father. Gossip. Gossip? 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 Well, if, well, if, well, if the word well, not too clear, is it? Well, if I think I would write that W schwa L. Well, 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 well. We use the word well quite a bit in spoken English and it's often reduced. Well, well, well. Not said very clearly. So she does a tiny little break here, but well and if linked together. Well, if, well, if, well, if. Well, if. Well if, well, if Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Do you feel the stress there? Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Again, the stressed syllable of the last word of the name. Ted Koppel talked about his, 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 Ted Koppel talked. So, up, down, shape of stress on ah. Also here on our stress syllable, talked. Now the ed ending here adds just another sound, the t sound. Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Co-workers, someone you work with. Stress on the first syllable there. Co-workers. Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers. Ted Koppel talked about his... I love these true T's. They're so clear and crisp. Ted talked. Ted Koppel talked about his, about his. Now what's happening here? This isn't a clear true T, is it? Ted Koppel talked about his, Ted Koppel talked about his, Ted Koppel talked about his, talked about his. It's because the H is dropped here. Now the T comes between two vowel or diphthong sounds, and we make that a flap. T, which sounds like the D between vowels in American English. Talked about is, talked about is. Talked about is, talked about is, talked about is co-workers botched boob jobs. Co-workers botched boob job. Two more stressed syllables there, an adjective. Botched boob job. Boob job, that's when women make their breasts bigger. Co-workers botched boob jobs. Co-workers botched boob jobs. Co-workers botched boob jobs. A botched boob job. Botched means something got messed up. 
something wasn't executed well, something went wrong. If you're going to have a boob job, you definitely don't want anything to go wrong. Botched boob jobs. Botched boob jobs. Botched boob jobs. Botched. Again, the ED ending makes a T. So the rule for ED endings, we have three different pronunciations. If the sound before is unvoiced, like here, ch, ch, then it's a true T. Actually, the rules are pretty clear. Uh, we And I, as I said, there are three clear cases. And I have a series of videos on that. So you can look up ED endings, Rachel's English, and get all of the rules and how we end up using them in real life in conversational spoken English. Botched, botched, botched boob jobs. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, 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 I would. The D would. We hear it in the vocal cords, but it's not released. And again, the L is always silent in that word. Yeah, I would. <laughs> Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. So, Monica, we have some reductions. We have our unstressed words contrasting with our stressed syllables. Everything links together smoothly. Some T's change. We have a dark L here in copple. You don't lift your tongue tip for that. All these different things, the linking, that make up the characteristics of American English. Botch. A great vocabulary word. Here are some more sentences. They didn't gather all the evidence. They really botched the investigation. Or, we ordered delivery and half the things we ordered weren't in the bag. They really botched our order. Now, let's listen to that whole conversation one more time while we look at the marked up text. Notice what you hear. Blair forgot her glasses. And she's gonna really be needing these to keep an eye on that boyfriend who, from what I hear, needs to keep his stapler in his desk drawer, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, Rach, maybe your resolution should be to, um, gossip less. What? Well, I don't gossip. No. <laughs> well, maybe sometimes I find out things or I hear something and I pass that information on. You know, kind of like a public service. <laughs> Doesn't mean I'm a gossip. I mean, would you call Ted Koppel a gossip? Well, if Ted Koppel talked about his co-workers botched boob jobs, yeah, I would. <laughs> I love this kind of video. I have tons of other videos like this. Check out my playlist, Learn American Pronunciation Through English Conversation on my channel to see more. I also have over 150 pronunciation analysis lessons just like this with audio to train with in my online school, Rachel's English Academy. Check it out and join. I'd love to have you as my student. You will be transformed. I make new videos on the English language here on YouTube every week. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on to stay up to date with the latest lessons. I love being your English teacher. That's it, and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.